Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some sapphic books by authors of colour that I absolutely adore. So just disclaimer, this is by no means an extensive full list. There's so many more and I'm definitely going to do a part two to this video to talk about even more. But here's ten to start off with. I just think it's very important to be intersectional in what you read and also for booktubers like me or anyone else like a blogger or bookstagrammer to be intersectional in what you recommend as well. So that's why I wanted to take this video to focus on some books by authors of colour and to make sure they are getting as much hype as I can possibly give them. So first up I want to talk about a recent read of mine and that is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a novel told in verse and it is so 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 gorgeous. This follows two sisters, one living in the Dominican Republic and another in New York, who have no idea that the other exists until their father dies very suddenly in a plane crash and they two end up connecting. So this novel obviously deals very very heavily with grief as the two girls grieve their sudden death of their father, but also family and sisterhood and friendship and this kind of connection that they both have with each other and their relationship and how it goes from them being complete strangers to the sisterhood that they have. and they deal with the struggles that they each face um, and how they differentiate and like the privilege that one may have over the other for certain reasons. And one of our sisters, Yahaira, who lives in New York, she is sapphic, she has a girlfriend and this is a very very minor part of the story so I wouldn't go into this just for the sapphicness, it's really about so 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 much more than that. And they have a very sweet relationship. I did love the little scenes that we did get between the two of them. They are next door neighbours, they share a balcony so they like see each other a lot and they're just so supportive of each other and I really enjoyed reading about their relationship. But yes, this definitely deals some, with some very hard hitting issues of the lives that these two girls go through and the kind of difficulties they face for their skin colour, for their nationality, things to do with immigration and money and poverty and health and everything like that. And this is just a really, really stunning, stunning emotional book. Next up we have got The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagardar. I've talked about this book several times on my channel before. I absolutely adored it. I, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> if you do want to know my kind of full thoughts on this, I will leave a link down below to the reading blog where I read this and the author's new release, Hanny and Nishu's Guide to Fake Dating. They are both absolutely fantastic books though. So this follows Nishat who, after coming out to her family as a lesbian, is told no, it's just not possible for a Muslim girl or for a Bengali girl like herself. And so she's kind of having to deal with this while also having the beginnings of a crush on another girl in her year, Flavia, who's like new to school and they meet over summer very briefly. But this is complicated when Flavia also begins a henna business when the girls school year have to do this like enterprise project and through this we get discussions of cultural appropriation versus appreciation and things like that. And it's just a fun little rivals to lovers romance but alongside some really heavier topics dealing with homophobia and Islamophobia and racism that these girls face and just how them existing at the intersection of being queer and Muslim in Bengali for Nishad and Brazilian for um, Flavia and how this all intersects and what this means in their different communities and it is just the most lovely wonderful book. I cannot recommend it enough. It's so well loved for a good good reason. I think that Adipa Jagadar is absolutely so talented at managing to write about some really heavy topics and keep everything overall light and fun and a romance book like this and in her new release too and it's just it's such a talent and it's done so well and this book the romance is the sweetest, it deals with like family and everything like that so well. The description of culture like through Nishad's family, they attend a wedding at the beginning so you get all the clothes, you get the food, it's just so wonderful to feel included in this and I cannot recommend this book enough either. Next up we have got Rise to the Sun by Leah Johnson. So I adored both of Leah Johnson's books, there's also You Should See Me in a Crown which is somewhere up here and I'll probably talk about that in another video but this is her new release and it follows two queer black girls attending a summer music festival. So we follow Tony who is grieving her father's sudden death a few months ago and returning to the festival where he really found himself in search of answers to her own life and what she should do and what journey she should go on next. And we follow Olivia who is dealing with another bad breakup and really blaming herself and questioning why her relationships never seem to end well and 
just looking for a bit of fun at a concert before having to go back to real life and this book manages to so perfectly encapsulate like festival atmosphere the kind of connection that live music gives you and it's just so well written it I cannot believe it only takes place over a weekend with so much that's packed in without it feeling like rushed and overwhelming and like too much is happening like it it just works so well as it is as a weekend um festival so these two girls they meet um Olivia is in a bit of a mess Tony helps her out and they decide together to collect these golden apples um to win a prize at the end of the festival and they work together for this and they each deal with their own friendships their own personal issues in their lives and how everything's going there and they just have this sweetest relationship and I really really loved reading it it's told through both perspectives and you really get to know both of the characters so well it's just a really really good book this is just a lovely fun summary read I really really enjoyed it and recommend it Next up we have got Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This is a new adult coming of age story following Dr. Grace Porter who, after completing her PhD, goes to Vegas and gets very drunk and marries a stranger. And she then returns to her normal life but she is haunted by this memory of this stranger who she almost fell in love with. They had such a connection and you know who she married. And at the same time she's also dealing with emerging into the job market after finishing her PhD and trying to find a job as a queer black woman in STEM and it really just deals with this kind of loneliness and pressures that you put on yourself as a young adult and it's just a phenomenal phenomenal book. I loved my time reading this, it has got the most gorgeous 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 lyrical writing and like I have tabbed so many quotes because they just were so gorgeous I couldn't not and the romance the romance it was so so sweet I loved the two of them together and now that's definitely not the main plot of this book it's definitely more focused on Grace and her mental health but the romance it gives me life they were so sweet for each other Yuki Grace's wife she runs this radio show and talks to like lonely creatures about lonely creatures and it's just the sweetest and it works so well with the journey that um Grace is going on and this dealing with this loneliness you feel as an adult and emerging into the real real world and I just loved it they both got amazing friend groups you've got big found family vibes it's just an incredible incredible novel I can't recommend it enough it's so worth the hype next up we have got After Love by Tanya Byrne and now this is pitched as a lesbian love story you've been dying to read which tells you everything you need to know really it is just a fantastic fantastic love story two lesbian main characters what more could you want so this falls ash who very tragically dies in a car accident and becomes a grim reaper and she is in the afterlife trying to adjust to her new life as a reaper but she's haunted by the memory of her first love poppy her girlfriend now this book is split into two halves and we follow both the before where ash and poppy's relationship begins and they fall in love with each other and then after the accident after Ash dies and her in the afterlife and the first half is like an amazing incredible romance it's so well written I was so rooting for them from like the very beginning they are just so perfect for each other they fit so well and I loved reading about the two of them it's also so like bittersweet to read because obviously they're planning like future trips future things to do and you know that this good time this love the time their future it's all going to come crashing down around them but you just can't help but love them and fall in love with them too it's just so well written like that but then you get to the second half and you have to kind of mourn that almost grieve it the same way that the characters are grieving and this whole concept of being a reaper in the afterlife is so cool and I really loved how it worked into this book it's definitely like a paranormal romance book um I'd say the romance is that significant a part of it and paranormal element just makes it so much more fun and upsetting <laughs> it's like it makes it so much more interesting but also like sad 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 <laughs> but you know what it's not overall sad it's just it's got a few tear jerky moments but this is definitely one to pick up if you want a bit more of an emotional read <laughs> Next up we have got Ace of Spades by Frida Bika Imiri. This is a YA thriller, it's high stakes, it had me on the edge of my seat, it's so intense and so good. So this follows two queer black leads, a boy and a girl who both attend this very elite private school 
and they are both threatened by an anonymous texter and have rumours spread about them and everything and these are bad rumours that could have very real consequences on their life and their ability to get into uh, a new school afterwards like a university and you follow the two just having to deal with this and eventually working together to stop whatever's happening to them and so I just I just adored this book it it's so well written I cannot get over how cleverly done it is and like everything it just you think you're at the worst and then it gets worse like Farida Abike Mede is not scared to go like that go hard on it and it makes it so good but also so like intense and you care so much for the characters but you're so worried about them and it is just a very very well written book to be honest I cannot wait to see what this author writes next so our main characters we have got Chiamaka who is like the bitchy popular mean girl I love that I love like bitchy popular mean girls getting depth and like, character development it's one of my favorite things to see this kind of deconstruction of that kind of trope so I loved it loved loved it here and we also follow Devin who is a queer black man he lives in the kind of rough side of town he's there on a scholarship rather than through money like Chiamaka and this means that in his neighborhood he really cannot have that he's gay getting out because it could kill him and he's dealing with that as well as like home life and just different relationships as well that he has to navigate and it's just all written and it's all done so so well it's a phenomenal phenomenal book it deserves all the hype it's gotten I'm so glad it's gotten the hype it deserves just I recommend it so completely <laughs> Next up I recommend Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Sugira. This is a fun summer rom-com romp, it's got, it's got the most messy sapphix, it's got like a love quadrangle, it's lots of messiness going on there and it's a lot of fun. So this follows Nozomi who moves to San Francisco for an art museum internship over the summer and there she meets three different girls and their lives all kind of get tangled up and caught up with each other. So we have got Willow who just was broken up with by her girlfriend and Nozomi immediately has a big crush on her and she proposes a fake dating scheme once they get to know each other a bit where they try and make Will's ex jealous but Nozomi's real intention here is on making Willow fall in love with her you know like you do in every rom-com movie or book so they go on their fake dating scheme but at the same time Will's ex is also dating another girl and th this is the kind of messiness we've got going on here of everyone trying to make each other jealous or like trying to move on and it's just it's a chaotic mess but it's so fun to read and I really love the kind of character development and relationship development this book had. I loved the way that it played with the fake dating trope, it kind of turned it on its head. It was a whole lot of fun to read and just, you know, good fun and we love that. All four girls are queer girls of colour as well which we love to see and it was just a whole fun time. Loved it. And I love this floppy paperback, like, look at that. <laughs> Next up we have got The Weight of the Stars by Kay Ankrum. So this is a sapphic contemporary YA novel. So this follows Ryan who has always dreamed in a career in space but knows it's not possible for a girl from her end of town, the wrong end. And she is like part of this good fun friend group of queer found family, misfits and loners. And I loved all of their scenes together, they are just so good <laughs> and a new girl arrives at school Alexandria and she is the daughter of a astronaut who went to space on a one-way trip to the edge of the solar system and every night she goes out to her roof and listens to for radio signals from her mother and Ryan is asked to befriend Alexandria but this is off her friendship is very much spurned Alexandria is not having it but when Alexandria falls from the roof and breaks her leg Ryan ends up having to lift her up every night and the two begin to grow closer and I actually read this for my reading vlog of reading Twitter's favourite sapphic books part 2 which I'll also link down below so you can get more of my thoughts there but this is just such a good story of friendship and family and the ones that we choose in our blood family it's so impeccable and this one also made me a bit emotional at the end I was really like not expecting how it ended but I loved it, it worked so well for the book I just loved watching the relationship between Ryan and Alexandria develop as they went from kind of not getting along at all to really beginning to fall in love with each other. But honestly the highlight of the book is the queer fine family, like chef's kiss. 
and there's easter eggs to Kate Ancrum's other book The Wicker King in this so I definitely recommend you read that one first it's a Killian it's fantastic next up is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe so this is a YA historical fiction that takes place in San Francisco in 1950 and follows a girl from Chinatown, Lily, as she begins to discover the lesbian bar scene alongside her friend Kath. And this deals so heavily with like lesbian culture and the lesbian bar culture and I loved, loved, loved reading that. It's just so like you feel so part of the community and I love that. I loved getting to explore this little bit of history that I really didn't know too much about. And you also deal very heavily with Lily being Chinese American and the kind of implications of that, especially here at the time of the Red Scare in the US and just all the kind of racism she faces as a Chinese woman, but also like homophobia and the kind of discrimination against women because she was to go into STEM and all of that, the kind of just sexism that was so normal in the day. So she's really dealing with a lot. She's got a lot on her plate, this girl, but I loved, loved, loved reading from her perspective and getting this perspective that you don't see in history books an awful lot. Yeah, it's just absolutely incredible, especially if you're interested in learning more about queer history. This one is an amazing place to start. I definitely recommend you try it. It's just not always easy to read, but a very, very enjoyable read. And you've got characters that you'll really want to root for and love. It's just very, very, very good. And finally, we have got Gear Breakers by Zoe Hanna Makuta. So this is a YA sci-fi, I am in love, it's the first in a duology, the sequel is called God Slayers, it will be out next year, it looks incredible, like look at this cover, I am in love. Um, so this follows a dual point of view of two girls who are on opposite sides of a war and they begin to learn that maybe they're not on such different sides. So we follow Sona who is a pilot, this means she can pilot these massive mecha monsters, these guys, and really she through that enforces the will of the city she lives in Godolia but she is not a fan of the city at all she doesn't agree with its ethos and she really wants to work to take it down from the outset from the inside sorry but you know she's one girl she doesn't know where to start that is until Eris is taken into the academy as prisoner now Eris is a gear breaker this means that she's part of a group of people that work to take down these mechas and try and fight for the rights of the people and she's taken prisoner and the two girls get talking and realize that they're really not on such different sides so they break out together and they begin to work together with other gear breakers to try and take down Godolia and the mechas and this is just such a fun ride it's got sapphic enemies to lovers it's got found family it's got just girls and teenagers in such impossible impossible circumstances it's got like these explorations of like what it means to be a god like that's what Sona becomes when she's a mecha she becomes it but also what it means to kill one like when Eris and the gear breakers get into one and kill it and it's just phenomenal it's got this lovely atmospheric writing and setting it's like this kind of ends of time badlands area that the gear breakers are in and it's just it's just damn good <laughs> what can I say I gave it five stars I wish I was better at talking about books that I love because I feel like in this video I get very repetitive but yeah loved it it's it just it's very intense I cannot wait for the sequel because the cliffhanger that this left me on was impressive I don't know how to cope I after I finished it, I was like what do I do now like how could I exist before I get the sequel in my hands Thankfully I've recovered from that, but now I'll just be spreading the Gear Breakers agenda and telling you to read it. And yes, that is the last book in this video, so I hope that you have found a new book that you want to pick up. I'll have Goodreads links to all of these down below alongside my reviews where I've got them. And just a reminder that this is by no means an exhaustive list, but it's definitely some of my all-time favourites and definitely books I really, really recommend that you pick up. And yes, you can find my social media and links to join my book club and discord server down below if you want to connect with me elsewhere. And yes, I just hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you another one soon.